I know, it took me some time to actually make this review for Heliod Sun Crown, and of course, here we have Walking Ballista with him. Whenever you look at a green card, a black card, or a blue card, you can easily say it's probably gonna be auto-included. It's usually great. But whenever you look at a white card, especially one with life gain and plus one plus one counters, it looks a bit casual, and Heliod, Sun Crowned, definitely looks casual at first sight. But there's nothing casual about this sun god, I mean he killed Elspeth, this guy means serious business. There is a card that goes by the name of Walking Ballista and it's hanging right next to him. So it's a XX which means you can pay 2 mana and it enters with X plus 1 plus 1 counters. You can remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from Walking Ballista to do 1 damage to anything. And then you can pay 4 mana to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him. Now the thing with Heliod is that Whenever you gain life, you may put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. And for two mana, you can give target creature lifelink. So if Walking Ballista has two plus one plus one counters on him, you use Heliod's ability and give the machine life gain. Then you remove a plus one plus one counter to deal one damage to one of your opponent's face. Trigger Heliod, you gain life, put a new plus one plus one counter on the walking ballista machine and then you sit there and go infinite damage and infinite life gain. And Heliod's Sun God is also a legendary creature that means you could actually run him as your commander and then you only need to grab walking ballista from your deck to finish the game. That is gonna be a little bit tricky though considering white is lacking tutors. They're good at tutoring for enchantments but they are really bad at tutoring for pretty much anything else. They can tutor for planeswalkers and some legendary creatures, but that's it. And that means that running Heliod as your commander is gonna be a very inconsistent deck. Now putting these two cards inside your deck, however, should probably be the better option. You will gain more color identities, which means you have better tutors, and then you just tutor for the two cards together and claim the victory. However, just because something is viable doesn't mean that it's something you should do. Maybe there is something better you can do instead. Let's actually look at the mana cost here. So we have Heliod entering at the CMC of 3. We have Walking Ballista. You have to have it on 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters because if it's only have, it's on 1, you remove 1, it will die and will go to grave and it will stop. So you have to pay 4 mana for Walking Ballista. We're up to... 7 mana currently, then you need to pay 2 more mana to give Walking Ballista life gain, that means we're currently looking at 9 mana 2 card combo and suddenly this combo doesn't look so good anymore. But we could trick it into play, right? We could use something like Flash Hulk and put the 2 cards into play instantly, suddenly we got a 2 card 2 mana combo, yet this will also not actually work. You see, Walking Ballista will enter the battlefield and instantly die. And that's sad. Also, if you for some reason have a Lord in play that will give Walking Ballista plus one plus one, then it's gonna be a one one with no plus one plus encounters on it. So from here, you can pay four mana to give Walking Ballista plus one plus one counter, and then you pay two more additional mana to give it life link. And then it suddenly turned into a 6 mana combo 2 card combo. So, no. You, you can trick it into play if you had a Lord here that will put more deck construction demand on your deck. But I don't think Flash Hulk this into play is gonna be good. However, there's always an however. If you for some reason want to have these two cards inside your deck, let's say that these two cards are auto included anyways, they are good in general, then I think this is a combo you should go for. However, these two cards aren't really good on their own and they are not auto included. Heliod's Sun Crown is a casual card, however you look at it, giving creatures plus one plus one counters, life gain is 
unnecessary features CDH decks are looking for. This is a very low powered card. It is doing nothing that CDH decks wanna do. Walking Ballista, however, is actually something you could include. It's something decks play from time to time because this actually has interaction. You can use it to destroy creatures and ongoingly grind value. It is a combo piece, but it's also something you can use during the gameplay, while Helios Sun Crown is only going to grow your army and give you life, and that isn't something CDH is looking for. So no, these two cards are not out included for any deck that I know about. But if, there's also always an if, you're playing on a lower power level, something on, let's say, semi-competitive. Let's go Atraxa Beatdown. Atraxa Combo, Atraxa Grind, Atraxa Plus One Plus One Counters. You're probably going to include Walking Ballista already, because that could maybe be a combo you're already going for inside your deck, before Heliod Sun Crown existed. And then you want to have Heliod Sun Crown in that deck as well, because this is going to synergize with your deck in general as Atraxa attacks, you gain life, you put a plus one plus counter, let's say, on Atraxa. Now Atraxa will grow herself, and you put plus one plus counter on your other creatures, and you're growing your army, and that is your game plan on your semi-competitive uh, lower power level. And then this combo is probably going to make sense. It's probably gonna be a fair combo on that power level. It's not going to be broken. It's going to be something other opponents can interact with because it's on a higher amount of mana and the two cards are synergizing in that deck. So I think this is something for lower power levels in general. Now what about Tumna? The blind spider lady, Madame Webb, has lifelink. That means it's gonna synergize with Heliod. So you could grow Tumna and gain more life and suddenly turn into Tumna Voltron. That's cool, but it's not competitive. It's something semi-competitive, I guess. So if you wanna build a Tumna, maybe Frasius, I don't think you should build Tumna Frasius on semi-competitive. That's still gonna be pretty broken. Tumna Frasius is good always. It's really hard to make a, a low power deck on TNT. So maybe go Tumna something else. That could be something on a lower power level, if you wanna build something on a lower power level. And then this could actually be something for you. So if that, go for it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, consider sharing my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link down below will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.